Welcome back to another day of van building. So what I'm doing today is I'm starting the framing for the walls. I've already got a little head start, as you can see. What I'm basically trying to do here is just make a kind of a batten system where I can screw all my wall boards and uh, roof boards into evenly so I don't have to screw into all the metal work and make a lot more holes. It's going to make it a lot more uniform as well, a lot easier to get that nice curve um, down the van and I'm also going to be able to frame my uh, bed extensions. So these are going to be the widest points of the van where I'm going to be sleeping widthways. So I need to frame that all in. So the way I'm doing it is I'm cutting down these 50 mil strips of 12 mil ply on the table saw. Um, it's great because it's quite flexible so I can kind of curve my battens to the um, conformities of the van. I get that nice curved look afterwards when I'm finished. And then I'm screwing them in with just uh, self-drilling metal screws into the panel work. Obviously making sure I'm not screwing into any of these little thin bits where it's going to poke through the edge of the van. Okay, so I've just finished framing up the bed um, wall. This isn't the actual framing for the bed itself, it's not structural, it's just for the, the walls and getting in my recess for my bed. Um, so I've just used this 12 mil ply stripped into 50 mil pieces and kind of tacked it all together with screws and then kind of reinforced it with ply behind it. And my plan now is to glue some plywood onto this surface. So I'm using a pretty thin plywood. It's actually the same plywood that I pulled out of the van when I first bought it. I think it's something like four mil. Uh, it's still in good condition. I'm gonna paint it anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna recycle that wood. So now I'm just gonna cut it down into the shapes and that'll be the back of my bed, the back and the end of my bed. And then once that's done, I'll be able to frame the side bits to make it look nice and pretty. So it's basically like a little insert. This here is going to be a little cupboard. So I've got one on each side. I've got power going to there, so you'll be able to put charging um, stations or so. It's probably where I'm gonna put all my indicators. So my water level indicators, my battery monitors, and yeah, my diesel heater control panel. But that's what I'm planning to do. So I've got this one and I've got the one behind me on the other side. So that's all framed up. Exactly the same thing I'm gonna do is um, put the plywood behind there and then frame it up. So this is the, the thin plywood. Most of it's pretty good. Some of it's got some chunks out of it from the old owner who had the van. I think I'll be able to get most of what I can. Uh, I've got a few pieces. Um, I don't need much, I'll just trim it down. And yeah, it's good recycling. Don't have to buy anything and it's, it's pretty thin. So I've cut my backing out. I've test fitted it, it fits pretty well. Now I'm gonna try and glue it to the wall. And the way I think I'm gonna do it is just sick a flex uh, on all these little supports. And then for everywhere else, I'm gonna use the spray adhesive just to glue it to the foam. Um, the foam's glued down pretty well because I used a lot of uh, spray adhesive the first time around. And then I'm just gonna sick a flex around all the edges. And then I'm just gonna try and wedge it in there as as good as I can, maybe wedge it off this wall or wedge it off this. It's not as strong, but I really just want to get it as pushed as, as hard up against there so I get that maximum amount of uh, leg room. All right, this side is done. I'm pretty happy. I think it's going to glue really well. Um, I did run out of Sikaflex there at the end and I went really crazy with the spray adhesive. I pretty much just used the whole bottle. I really just want to make sure that is stuck on and it will never come off because that'll be a real big pain if it peels off eventually. So I'll leave that for a day and then I'll come back and do the other side and then I'll be able to start framing the inserts and making this cupboard and this cupboard. Okay, so I've put my two backing boards in now. They're all glued in there really nice with Sikaflex. Cut the uh, hole out for the window. So where I'm at now is I'm putting in kind of like the shelving or the border of my bed and then my little box um, cabinet here. So I've already done it on this side. It's come out really nice, so that's gonna be a door on here. And then the bed sits on this part. This is all gonna get painted. So now I'm gonna do it on this side. 
Okay, so the way I'm actually framing this bed out is um, I've just stripped down some 12 mil ply uh, on the table saw. And it's actually a bit of a custom fiddly job because this isn't quite square in the sense that this bit here is wider than this bit here and that's just the way the van contours are. So I'm doing a lot of measuring and trimming just to get it all right. And so I've just made it a little bit bigger on the top here and then I run my line down. So yeah, you end up cutting more off this side than you do off this side. So then you get that nice flush finish at the end. Um, the way I'm kind of adhesing it on, um, I'm just screwing it straight into this plywood on one side. And because I don't want to be screwing into this thin plywood, it's only five mil and then the other side is just the metal van wall. I'm just using some liquid nails. It's super strong. There's not going to be any load or anything on it because it's, you know, it's just a frame. Um, and then I'm just going to glue that straight onto that timber board there and put some screws in, hold it all in place. Okay, so I've gone and picked up my paneling for my roof and what I'm going to be using is Western Red Cedar. So it is the most aromic wood that you could possibly have. It smells like a sauna and it is just absolutely magnificent to look at. I'm hoping the van is gonna smell like a sauna as well. I'm only gonna do the roof, not the walls, because this stuff is quite pricey. It's about double the price of pine and half the width. So work that out, it's about four times the price of pine. So just for the roof, it's gonna cost me about $400. Whereas pine would have cost me about a hundred bucks. about working with cedar is when you get covered in the sawdust it just smells amazing um, you could use this as a air freshener or something you just Okay, so I'm coming to the corners um, of my paneling now where it kind of meets the wall and there are some tricky angles that I'm going to have to kind of cut out. So I'm pulling out my favourite toy for this build is my contour gauge. Yes, I remember the name this time. Um, what is it called? Chamfer angle a contour gauge. And it's going to work really well. So there's a kind of a lip here and instead of me going and cutting out cardboard and trying to get the cut right, all I'm doing is just lining this up and then I'm just going to mark a little point here where it's going to meet on my other piece and then I can just cut it out perfectly the very first time. Okay, so I've drawn the contour out just like that. So I'm going to cut out with the jigsaw, we're in 3, 2, 1. There we go. So I've cut that contour out and I'll see now if it's going to fit. Alright, so there we go. It's quite good. I left a little bit of a gap there just because it doesn't. You don't want the wood to squeak when it's um, when you're driving. But that's how easy it is to cut a contour now with that contour gauge. So one of the main questions I always get asked regarding the wooden paneling is how do you get the wall and the ceiling to line up so well? And a lot of it is preparation. You want to get your battens in, and you want to take a lot of measurements when you start your paneling you really want to get that very first one in the middle but you also want to make sure that when it gets to the edge it's not like a little sliver um, because that'll be too hard to work with it has to be a little bit of meat so when I measured this out I had 86 millimeter paneling and I measured across and I knew that when I got to the edge here it'll pretty much be half half of one so I knew I was right there so the next thing is actually joining it up. So what I've basically done, and you can see here, this is the end result. I'm gonna have 12 millimeter paneling coming up to here, so it's gonna be nice and flush. I've just given the whole roof a sand and it's come out looking so nice. 
So the next job now is I've got to fill all these little screw holes that I've made. Um, and the best thing to do with that is to use the wood you've already got. So use a sander and make some sawdust. Today I'm going to be putting up the side panelling. So I've just gone for 12 millimeter pine tongue and groove. This stuff is really cheap in Australia. Um, it's about three bucks a meter, 140 mil wide. It's actually pretty light. Now the first thing I'm going to do is line the first board to the roof. And that's probably the most critical part. Here it's not so bad because I am going to have a cabinet here so you're not going to see the join. But on the other side, it's going to be visible. So I really want to make sure I get it right and there's no gaps and it looks really good. So I'm testing my theory out on this side. And the way I'm doing it, I've lined it up. I've clamped itself parallel to the van and I've drawn a reference line. I know that the highest amount I have to cut off is about 75 millimeters. That goes all the way, everything here, 75 mils to where it sits here. So what I've done is I've drawn a line at 75 mils and then all I'm doing is every 15 centimeters, I'm just marking the height from here to here and transposing it off that 75 millimeter mark up. And then what happens is I end up drawing this line here. I don't know if you can see that, but I draw this line that so comes up here and that's my cut line. So I spent a little extra time last night uh, just kind of finishing or getting a head start on this wall. I've kind of come to a standstill now because I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with the kitchen and how high my splashback is going to come up. So what I'm going to do in the meantime is do a bit of a marathon sanding. So I'm going to sand all my filling holes on my roof and I've got a lot of sanding to do around the edges. And because Sawdust is going to make a massive mess, I've kind of rigged up my own shop vac because I don't have one, but I do have just a household vacuum cleaner and my sander. And I've got a three or four meter grey water hose that's kind of flexible and bendy. So what happens if I turn it on? 